I'm just starting it, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Corporal Michael Gauthier, G-A-U-T-H-I-E-R, Media Relations Officer with the Kelowna RCMP. In a short time, the officer in charge of the Kelowna Central Okanagan RCMP, Superintendent Kara Triance, will be delivering a statement in relation to the Crime Severity Index data released publicly by Stats Canada early this morning. Firstly, we'd like to respectfully acknowledge our presence on the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Silks Okanagan people who have resided here since time immemorial. We recognize, honor, and respect the Silks Okanagan lands upon which we live, work, and play. This press conference will be delivered in English by Superintendent Triance. A bilingual and French-speaking officer is also present to provide the statement in French, immediately be following if requested, and will assist with any translations for those who require same. This officer is Corporal J.J. Peters. Superintendent Triance will take questions following her statement, and I will let you know when that period has ended. Thank you, and please stand by. Good afternoon. Today, Statistics Canada released their police reported crime statistics in Canada report, as well as tools and information to the public to provide a full picture on how crime is measured in Canada. The data in the report analyzes changes in crime reported to police across the country. Statistics Canada analyzes crime severity in 40 different census metropolitan areas and seven in British Columbia. The Kelowna CMA includes Peachland, West Kelowna, West Bank First Nation, Kelowna, Lake Country, and the surrounding rural communities. We have been working to analyze the data released to police and public this morning, and it is holding relatively consistent with our analysis and projections, and I have updated on those routinely throughout this year. I'm pleased to report that as projected, our CMA value is down 6%, 5.9%. Please to report that our CMA value is down 5.9% to 118.6 for overall crime severity in 2023. For violent crime, we are up 0.2% at 106.1. And for nonviolent crime, we are down 7.9% at 124.7. The CSI, while an imperfect tool, compares crime trends across the country. That data reflects the relative seriousness and severity of offenses and assigns a score to those offenses. The score is weighted and developed by Statistics Canada based on the average severity of sentences delivered by the courts for each type of offense. And in the Kelowna CMA, our top 2023 drivers are making, distributing child exploitation and sexual abuse material, break and enter, fraud, shoplifting, and sexual assaults. RCMP criminal intelligence and data analysts identify and inform our trends and needs in a timely manner. Throughout the year, we identify trends and implement tactics to reduce crime in many areas. Through analytics, we focus on our community safety. Through analytics, we focus our resources on our areas of community safety that are most important. Most importantly, I want to acknowledge the impacts of our crime reduction initiatives and work we have done in collaboration with our communities to focus on crime and safety. We, alongside our partners, have remained focused on addressing and decreasing crime and increasing the sense of safety in our communities. Going forward, we remain steadfast and focused on those efforts. Some of our key and ongoing initiatives are the daily tracking of police reported crime to inform effective development of our resources and target high crime locations. We conduct geographic analysis to ensure all of the officers focused on areas that are most impacted by crime. And we participate in programs such as the Provincial Repeat Violent Offending Initiative and creating our own repeat 
property crime focused programs. Focusing on efforts of our proactive teams to address the top CSI influencers, supporting the Kelowna Integrated Court, collaborating with our partners in justice, social development and health. We lead multi-agency tables to intervene and support individuals before their situations become acute. And we've increased police visibility on streets, parks and in known problem areas while enhancing relationships with key partners in the business community. As we reflect on 2023, we acknowledge the investments in enforcement positions across our region. And we can know that we continued growth and investments in justice, health, housing, and social programs must match the growth in our communities to decrease crime, influencing factors, and improving community safety. We won't wait for 2024 CSI to be released to tell us what's influencing crime. And we are committed to ongoing reporting, focusing on crime reduction and providing excellence in policing services. We will remain proactive and data led to prevent and reduce criminality in our region. I am proud of our efforts and pleased with the steady decrease in crime across the areas of violent and nonviolent crime in 2023. Our police professionals will continue to tackle crime drivers relentlessly, serving the public with commitment and professionalism. We value our partnership in our communities and together we continue to strive to achieve significant changes by addressing the root causes of criminality. Thank you. I'll take questions. Absolutely. So there's a few things happening in Kelowna uh, over the last four years, specifically when I've been in command, and uh, we've seen rapid growth. We're coming out of the pandemic two years ago, and we are changing many ways in which we police. We saw bail reform across the country change, and there's been a lot of discussion and advocacy on addressing repeat violent offending in our community, including repeat property offenses. One of the top drivers we saw in 2022 and 2021 when we saw the provincial investments in the repeat violent offending program and the alignment between crime, justice and health, police at the table, all in one location, working without silos, that is when we began to see those changes to be able to address the problem of repeat violent offenders. Um, in the past, yeah, say what you want about whether it's fair, Kelowna has grabbed headlines. We are no longer at the top. We are seventh in the country now. Um, when talking about addressing some of the root causes of crime and what's driving crime, and um, probably what's most common here and what's most visible, at least, is these um, like theft under five thousand, like street level um, crime. Um, what are some things that are being done to address the root causes of, of that sort of crime? Yeah. So. Some of the, the theft under and shoplifting projects that we've ran this year, such as Project Barcode, which was um, extremely important at targeting repeat offenders in the property crime realm, um, and the creation of our repeat offender program, which specifically deals with property crime and is a Kelowna-led project. Uh, those are initiatives that are ones that we will continue to focus on in 2024 to enhance our focus and efforts on those street level crimes. And of course, police visibility, where we are out there and engaging with our communities and our businesses, uh, making connections with our business associations and those most impacted uh, by the criminality uh, in retail crime, that is a focus for 2024, continuing to enhance those efforts. Can you give us an update on the uh, body that was found in the waterfront park in I'm not going to speak to uh, those files right now, but I have my media team here who's prepared to speak to that at the conclusion of this uh, press conference. On, on, on the list of items that are driving the, the crime severity up, it looks like some of these areas um, are where, you know, it takes a lot of work for the RCMP to, um, you know, lay charges on things like make, making and distributing child sexual abuse material or fraud. 
<laughs> the highest ones to me almost look like more a reflection of more police work being done. Mm, thank you. So this is one of the things that we describe uh, with the CSI as an imperfect tool. Uh, the CSI is the number of reported crimes. So if we enhance reporting, uh, as I've been really encouraging citizens to do, you are going to see uh, a increase in some areas. But specifically, as we look at uh, child abuse and sexual exploitation material, we have seen uh, very significant enhancements in technology that have allowed us to detect and uh, determine where uh, that material is being viewed and exchanged uh, quicker through um, the agent through the changes in legislation that have happened at a federal level um, that information is being shared with police and the national child for exploitation uh, center quicker than it has in years past and so we're seeing higher incidents reported to police allowing us to investigate that sooner and make efforts to try and stop this behavior the same thing with fraud generally a, a, a fraud charge requires a lot of work by the police you could just sit on your hands and then the crime numbers would go down <laughs> We could. <laughs> However, uh, we know that fraud is deeply impacting for many residents within our community. And what's most important for us as we begin to address fraud is that we get that reporting. There's a lot of investments across Canada uh, going into cybercrime, and it's important. Um, and there's a lot of steps that we can take uh, in the public to make sure that we are protecting our financial assets. Um, and there are known scams out there that are impacting people at higher rates if you are uh, somebody who is um, new to the country or if you are elderly or impacted through um, not knowing how to access the tools that protect you from fraud and financial crime, those can be uh, deeply impacting for individuals. And so we encourage uh, reporting and we certainly want to support people with the resources and tools to be able to take steps to address uh, with us financial crime. One area where I think people feel sometimes let down by the police are things like business break-ins. Mm. Thank you. I'm very pleased uh, to see the significant uh, decrease in our break and enters across the region. Um, to specifically pull up our numbers here for break and enters. One moment, please. So break and enters are down 28% uh, across the central metropolitan area for our region. Very pleased with those results as a result of the targeted enforcement and repeat violent offending uh, initiatives that have been done, as well as uh, data-led uh, policing work, which targets and deploys my police officers to known locations, uh, focusing on individuals committing that crime. Do you have any statistics that talk about the regions of the city, the, the issues downtown, now Rutland seems to be becoming uh, a focus for some of the crime that seems to have moved out there and phones being stolen, people walking into garages, that type of thing. Do you have any statistics on that? So absolutely, we look at statistics weekly, daily within the police station to deploy our resources to the areas of highest uh, propensity for crime. And as we do that work, we're able to put our police officers out into those locations and focus our resources in that area. This report was released, released to us at 5.30 this morning. And so uh, what I will continue and commit to doing is reporting routinely through uh, council reports on areas that we will be focusing on, whether that be through uh, crime trends or education or offense types as it changes in 2024. Last year, RCMP credited a lot of the crime rate to tourism in Kelowna. How has a decrease in tourism affected the crime rate? Well, I want to clarify that statement because that's uh, actually infactual. So it is the number of visitors that we see in the area um, and any other area where there is a high visitor population. So perhaps a, a large metropolitan area where there's a significant rural community that accesses services within a city. Those are things that, again, that we talk about the imperfectness uh, of the CSI tool. That tool um, doesn't take into account the visitor population. It simply looks at permanent population. So uh, a city that is extremely large and isolated from a visitor population is not going to see the same number of citizens requiring policing services as those that require uh, a larger population to be policed throughout the year. decriminalization, recriminalization, small possession, how much people can have. How has that sort of um, change in the political landscape translated to the street level and what you guys are interacting with, like with the public? How has that impacted? Um, so 
One of the things we know about crime statistics is it has shifted. So the crime rate is actually a calculation of the volume of offenses taking uh, drugs and trafficking out of that. Whereas the crime severity index is the actual number of offenses reported. And what we saw in uh, that period of decriminalization or recriminalization as many are calling it is a shift in how the calls are categorized. So for example, where we saw a call from a citizen of somebody is using drugs in my um, backyard or near my backyard in the back alley, we would see that categorized as a drug offense. Later, as we saw decriminalization move in, we would see that come in as a trespass offense or a suspicious occurrence. But we would still have a high number of calls for service related to that. And in fact, for many years, uh, the police have not been arresting for possession related charges. And so we didn't see that change very much as well in our founded and weighted clearance rates. And so in these numbers that we're talking about today, we're seeing a relatively unchanged amount of numbers uh, as, as I can interpret it uh, at the best of my abilities right now. Yeah, I would almost call that a consistent uh, a consistency in our violent crime. And what we're seeing is uh, the increased number of sexual violence reports and sexual assaults. And so we will continue to address that. Um, and in many instances where we see um, individuals who have been uh, sexually assaulted coming forward and reporting to police, we're able to address that offense in our community and take a trauma-informed approach uh, to working with that individual who's been um, who's been impacted. And certainly with our partners, we continue to work very hard at the collection of evidence and the arrest of sexual offenders in our community. And so uh, that's the number one area that I'm seeing uh, in this year's drivers for violent crime. Um, we don't, Statistics Canada does not have uh, make, distribute child exploitation and sexual abuse material categorized as a violent crime. It's categorized as nonviolent, which is, uh, is, an interesting categorization in, in my opinion. So we're looking primarily at sexual assaults as our number one driver in changes in crime. And of course the, um, the, the index is determined through the weighting of uh, judicial sentences. And so that is that, um, something that impacts if a judicial sentence is longer, that is going to be something that, um, that actually drives that number up, right? If we're seeing longer sentences coming out of uh, out of that, that will change that index. And we'll have to do some more work as to how that indexing um, actually becomes uh, more significant over time and what has changed. Annually, the, the indexes are changed every year, recategorization um, based on those sentences.